Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another episode of On Track with The Needle Drop, our ongoing interview series. And in this episode, I'm talking with none other than Mr. Denzel Curry, Florida rapper who dropped one of the most aggressive rap albums of last year, right in the middle of 2016, Imperial, his most successful project yet. And in this interview, we're gonna be talking about the success of that project, we're gonna be talking about what fueled that project, and where Denzel sort of sees his art moving in the future. That and more in this episode of On Track. What's going on, dude? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? Last time we talked, we was in uh, Texas. Yeah, we were in Texas. We were in Austin. Yeah, or no, were, were we, ju- we were just outside Austin, I think. Yeah, we was. I don't know where the hell we was, actually. Shit become a blur sometimes. We were at the Sound on Sound Festival. You were invited yeah. there to perform. I was invited there to do an interview with another artist. And one thing I didn't know about that festival and something that I did not see advertised about that festival at all, and I don't think you knew this either, but it's on a renaissance fairground so when we got there there were like all sorts of castles and shit everywhere yeah and like stands stands where you can get like turkey legs and there were people who it's like it's there are people who work there year round and they're dressed up in all like the renaissance garb and everything and i saw some people there still doing that there was a robin hood guy there and i saw some lady there and they were in character like amongst all these like you know festival goers and everything it was pretty weird it was kind of it was actually it was kind of gangster because i've never been to a renaissance fair before like yeah it was crazy yeah it was definitely like it was definitely its own thing and they had like i don't know the the, the it, it gave the festival like a unique thing like there was a guy who i did, i don't know if you saw it, there was like a guy who they had like all tied up with his hands near his head and he was like insulting people and you could throw tomatoes at the guy no, I didn't even see that. that was, my yeah, mindset if, was if, just if you back. walked by, he was like just insulting everybody who walked by. It was like the weirdest thing. Wow. I did not see that at all when I was there. But another thing at this festival that sort of uh, made a memorable festival for me is that we met there. Yeah. And how we met is one of, one of your dudes came up to me and he just said, Denzel Curry's looking for you. And I was like, he's, he's, he's looking for me. And then I said, I, I hope he saw my new review. I hope, I hope he saw my new positive review of his new album. Yeah, man. I was like, all right. Because I remember when you did Nostalgic, and I was like, okay, cool. 3 2 Zell playing the shrooms. I thought you was going to get it, but you was like, nah. He was, and then, like, Imperial, I was like, yeah, I had to see that shit, you know? And then when we heard that you was going to be out there doing the podcast, he was like, man, we got to look for this fool right here. And that's what happened. And then they ended up finding you before I did. We we talked about a lot of things while we were down there. And um, to to sort of like, you know, get going on my questions. um, Something that I have to bring up, because I heard people in the crowd talking about it when I was watching you perform. And also recently, uh, the platform is dead now. So I feel like we kind of have to do a bit of a tribute here. But uh, one thing that happened last year was your song Ultimate sort of blew up on Vine. Yeah, And all of these videos were sort of like, you know, uh, being linked to your song to sort of like represent something really hard or crazy or like insane going on. But, you know, uh, I mean, obviously I heard that song before all of that business and I enjoy that song or enjoyed it first outside of the context of that sort of meme, if you can call it a meme. And the thing about that track is that it's so incredibly aggressive and it's powerful and it's in your face. I mean, it's such a such a fucking monstrous track. And, you know, in, in your opinion, you know, the guy who made that song, who wrote those lyrics, who performed that track, you know, I mean, in your head, do you have a vision for how people should be listening or perceiving this song? Like, or... Uh, uh, no, nah, not do, really. When, when, like, like, when, like, when people enjoy that song within the context of a meme, does it kind of ruin it? Or for you, is it just another win at the end of the day? It's another win because it gets more people to know my stuff and... When I originally wrote that track, it was just really for fun. Like, it was really for the fans. It's like something I did for fun, you know? And it ended up blowing up into a thing that I didn't even know it was going to go past. So, yeah, I'm thankful about the memes at the end of the day. It could get annoying sometimes, but now I'm thankful for it because it probably would have never blew up. You know what I'm saying? It probably would have got big, but not super big like that, you know? And I I do think, though, that... You know, obviously the world of people who are sort of being introduced to you 
through this meme are kind of different than maybe the world of people who you might have imagined kind of listening to this song in the first place. I mean, you, you know, are you the type of artist or the type of person who you're trying to make art that feels a certain way, delivers a certain idea, delivers a certain feeling, and you're trying to connect with other people who, who also kind of share that with you? Or are you trying to of give course. people who are totally outside of your world kind of a look inside? I mean, I think it varies with both because sometimes I want people to like to feel because everything's real at the end of the day. And if people want to be, you know, somewhat feel human and I want to give things that's relatable. So I do some of the realistic stuff for like audiences all around the world. But at the same time, like I'm like <clears throat> sometimes I come form to escapism. So it's like it varies. So people couldn't be able to listen to my music and stuff like that and feel like an out of world experience like something that they never heard before coming from like another dimension and stuff like that like it, it goes hand in hand it's like a balance i would say uh moving away from that uh to just kind of how you're doing now as far as like you know career wise at the moment i mean your latest record is it wrong to say that it's pretty much your most well received album so far as far as like you know uh no, grabbing not, attention not- reception all that no, it's not wrong to say that because it was actually well structured, well written, and it did feel like its own thing. And most of the artwork and the videos, everything was cohesive with the imagery that came mm-hmm. with the music sonically, you know? So, mm-hmm. like, I would say it was really well written down to the video. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, is it, uh, I'm saying it's been re- really well received by the fans. Like, it's, a, it's gained you more of a following. Yeah. Yeah, it actually Correct? has. Yeah, that is true because. Most of them said this was like the real sequel to Nostalgia 64, which was got me the intention in the first place. And it was well received in that context. Okay, so so it's gained you a larger following. Moving forward from here, uh, when you're releasing me- new music, recording new music, writing new music, uh, is it important for you to sort of maintain your artistic independence? Because uh, as far as I know, you're still not signed to like a major or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it's really important for me, at least, because nobody can tell me what my art is at the end of the day. I know what's best for me at the end of the day, and the people who stuck with me know because they've been there, and they know who I am, and they know what I do, and they know what it is I go through, you know? So it's real important for me to have the creative control over my stuff. Nobody can tell me what Denzel Curry would write. Only I know what I can write and what I can do and what I have to do. And at this point, with your career and with your uh, your followers, your fan base, I mean, originally, you were getting a lot of tension off the fact that you were sort of affiliated with Space Ghost Perp's whole Raider Clan thing. Yeah, and I was in that Raider sort of, that sort of splintered off. And would you say at this point you're kind of you've sort of come into your own sort of the hype off of that has kind of died down, and now you've kind of got your own movement going? Yeah, of course. Because when I was working on Imperial, man, like, I basically honed my skills, and that's what separated me from the rest. I mean, even when I worked on Nostalgic, that was my first time working on the album itself. You know, even though it wasn't with the majors, it wasn't with a label or nothing like that. I came into my own way back when, you know, just by being me, by being myself. Hmm. And, uh, you know, the sort of independence that that you're enjoying right now, you know, with your fan base, I mean, and, and people who were either a part of that same Raider Clan movement or are affiliated with it in some way, you know, other collaborators like Little Ugly Mane um, uh, yeah. uh, or other artists who obviously share like a similar fan base like Bones, for example. Um, mm-hmm. it, you guys have such a huge, a gigantic, like a passionate and a fiery following on SoundCloud. And it's like, it's really crazy because it's sort of like its own sort of like, I don't know, storm in a teacup or something because it just doesn't seem like it, not to say that it doesn't exist anywhere else, but it seems like it's at its height there. It's like you guys are getting hundreds and thousands of streams off of songs. And it seems like to me, like as an outsider, like that's something that labels would be just rolling over themselves to like get a hold of. You know, I mean, are labels not approaching or are you guys uh, just like, you know, are, is, is your independence that important to you that you're just like, we're just going to do it on our own because we can just continue that way? I mean, labels did approach me, and then I eventually ended up signing up to Loma Vista. But the main thing was I didn't want my art to be compromised by somebody who doesn't even understand it and just going to have it and going to end up shelving me. So I came up with a list of demands because at the end of the day, this is like drug dealing, man. Like, you're the drug dealer. You deliver the dope. You can't, you know what I'm saying? They just going to fund you for the dope. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to make your money. You flip it. So... 
I thought like a drug dealer when it came down to this music shit. And that's the reason why, like, um, independence is, like, really important to me and stuff like that. Because, like, I'm not trying to be with the middleman. I'm not trying to be, you know, like, be, like, uh, under anyone, like a soldier. I want to be my own leader, you know what I'm saying? And that's, like, something that nobody can take from me. Being an in- individual is, like, what I've always been. And, you know, <clears throat> them taking my art is, like, them taking my dope. And I can't have that happen. <laughs> All right. Well, that's obviously what sort of drives you as far as the business side of things, as far as releasing your music. But what about sort of that drive for creative progression? Because Planet Shrooms, you were saying, you know, that that uh, it's those sister EPs like that was way more experimental for you. That was way more psychedelic. Um, What caused you to metamorphosize from that to imperial where obviously it's a way less psychedelic album it's way more in your face it's dry it's gritty it's raw it's more concrete it's real um you know sort of what, 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 what made you change from one to the other you know sort of in between those two projects because i listened to all my projects back i listened to nostalgic mm-hmm. first and see why people really liked it so well and then i listened to three two zero playing shrooms and had to understand why people didn't like that so where I see, where most people see failure, I can see success. So what I did was I made something that was really straight to the point, very cohesive and just very in your face because I was going through a lot of emotions at that time. And that's what had to happen. And that's how Imperial came out. And, um, you know, what about sort of your experience level at that point too? Because, you know, it had been a little while since you had put out those EPs. And, you know, let's also, uh, put out there that you were really young when you came out with nostalgic 64 yeah you know and in between there and imperial i mean a lot happened a lot could have happened in between those times and i mean even now you're still relatively young in your early 20s uh, you know at this point do you feel like you're hitting upon a sound that you're going to be sticking with a while or do you still feel like you're still learning and that you still have a lot of progression to go ahead of you and a lot of change ahead of you <laughs> that part <laughs> no yeah. the learning yeah the learning pretty much like i'm just learning and trying to progress every day you know i'm trying to find new ways to evolve i'm not trying to stay the same way because if i stay the same way it's going to end up being traditional and routine and people are going to get used to it and then eventually get bored so i'm just finding new ways and so way to find new ways is to learn in order to learn you got to do uncomfortable things and in order to be uncomfortable that's how you grow so where do you see yourself going with this new record, with your music on this new album? Where are you going to be pushing us next in terms of your sound or your message? I'm going to stick, like, I'm going to blend two albums together. What I'm going to do is, like, the trippy sound and the psychedelic sound that y'all heard on, like, Nostalgic and Planet Insurance and stuff, I'm going to mix that with the structure that I had on Imperial so they could be well-written songs and everything. Because if I don't know if y'all know this on Imperial, like, it didn't have no, like, really no real transitions like how Nostalgic did and like how 320 Zell playing the shrooms did. So sure. I'm going to mix both of them together because I know how to write the songs well structured and like cohesive. Now, you know what I'm saying? And with deeper subject matter instead of just like the same topics that I've been going over for years. Like I'm going to go deeper with it. Something that I'm afraid to touch on is making me uncomfortable but that's how I'm going to grow as an artist. And what topics, you know, you were talking about earlier how you were going to sort of, you know, really touch people emotionally with this record. What topics are you going to be addressing to sort of elicit that kind of emotion from uh, from the audience? My strong suit is storytelling. Like, I could mm-hmm. tell the best stories with my music, like, such like Dark and Violent and Sick and Tired and, like, This Life. Most of them, you know what I'm saying? Most of my songs that w- were really well received were stories, you know? And um, I just want to touch on topics that people that people don't touch on, like the trials and tribulations of losing your mom, you know what I'm saying? Like things like that, like things that people could relate to pretty much. Hmm. Uh, all right. Moving off of, of that, because you've given us a lot on that. And uh, if all that's true, I'm looking forward to the record. Uh, but as far as sort of hip hop in general, which I want to kind of give your opinion on because, you know, you're very young right now. You're putting out music that a lot of people love. Uh, You're going to be the future of this genre in a lot of ways. 
uh, you know, because uh, while, you know, a lot of other artists who are older may be bigger than you in terms of status right now, you know, it's their, their clock is ticking. You know, it's like you're the next generation. So moving on from here, do you feel like, I don't know, does it concern you that hip hop sort of seems so fractured right now? Because there are so many different sounds and subgenres and subcultures within the genre right now. I mean, in nah, my opinion, nah. there's like almost like a sea of difference between artists like Leaf or um, Migos or Bus Driver and Macklemore and um, Murda Mook or Little Yachty, you know, and, and sort of where do you see yourself fitting into all this? Because in a way, it sort of seems like a tornado or a mosh pit with everybody sort of doing their own thing. I mean, I just feel like I'm going to fit in because it's, damn, it's kind of hard to answer this question. I ain't going to flush, man. Mm. Like, Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a big topic. Like, I would say, like, I'm going to fit in because I'm not going to do anything that's going to make me sound like another artist, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, if you listen to most songs on the radio, everybody pretty much sound the same and shit, talk about the same things, like lean and all this shit, like all that bullshit and whatever the fuck. And, like, me, I'm just going to stand out because, like, it was up. Like, I'm just going to stand out because, not saying I'm different, just because, like, the subject matters and the shit that's going to set me apart with the beats and everything. Like, every beat I ain't, I'm going to have ain't going to be a Metro Woman beat or, like, just some turnt ass shit, you know? It's just going to be, like, I'm just going to be me, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's what's going to separate me from everybody else. Everybody else going to do them at the end of the day. But at the same time, the subject, they all still have the same subject matter, you know? And I'm just going to try to, like, separate from that, and that's why I'm going to keep moving forward. But as far as, um, you know, you're talking about a, a lot of hip-hop songs sounding the same on the radio, um, do you feel like the radio is dictating the sound of the genre and the culture as much as it used to yeah, be, or has all that kind of, you know, gone onto the internet? Nah, nah. The radio dictates the sound. The internet has every sound you can imagine. You just don't have to look for it. Like, you get, people get paid to play the same shit on the radio every day. I heard it. I know about it. It's like, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's still sort of like radio is kind of like, uh, guiding the, guiding the, guiding the sound of the culture right now, more than sort of what you're seeing online then. Yeah. Like, let's say you heard like a weekend song, like I feel it coming. Like you heard it just now. And then like three songs later, you're going to hear that thing again. It's in heavy rotation. When I was in heavy rotation, man, like, you know, it's being dictated by somebody, you know? Mm. And if it's not there, it's on the internet. But back to, uh, I guess, the genre sort of being fractured a little bit. Um, you know, do you still sort of see hip hop functioning right now as yeah, a collective, yeah. as kind of a culture, as kind of a conscious culture? Or is it kind of just like in a bunch of pieces at the moment? It's just in a bunch of pieces because everybody's not like conscious. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own agenda. You got your conscious people over here. You got your swaggy people over here. You got your gangsters over here. And whatever they do, like, it's still hip hop. Like, it's not tradition. Hip hop is not tradition. If it was, then we'll still be rapping like the '80s, but we're not. You know, it has to keep. Like, in order for hip hop to survive, it had to keep adapting. In order to adapt, you have to keep the basic form, but at the same time, you let other forms in. Why you keep your basic form and it just experiment with that? So, I would say like, hip hop is still alive. It's just like it's just gonna keep adapting and keep moving. That's the same way with rock. You know. Like, the same way everything progresses. Like, how we were talking about, like, MP3s and, like, all that shit. And that just keeps progressing. Like, that's how hip-hop is. Because nothing's really, like, routine. Nothing's fixed. And nothing's, like, set. You know what I'm saying? It's going to keep evolving and keep adapting. Um, You know, you just kind of used rock as an example there. But a lot of people lately have been kind of... uh uh, spinning the narrative that uh, that rock music has kind of run out of ideas and sort of hit a bit of a creative wall. And in some respects, hip hop has replaced rock in terms of that countercultural force. Uh, because in modern they music. got mixed. Because mm. rock and rap got mixed over time. Like you hear mm. some artists that sound like punk artists, but they're rap artists at the same time. Like even sure. Lil Ugly Man. Lil Ugly Man used to be a noise artist, and you could tell by his music that he mixed noise along with rap. And like same with my shit. Like I mix psychedelic shit with my raps and that's what keeps it going and it gives off like a rock feel or whatever but at the same time there's a lot of stuff that's mixed in there like there's a jamaican influence in there there's like a whole bunch of influences in one 
part of the music and that's why rap is replacing rock because we know how to mix and formulate flow because they want to hear something that they can feel which is like something that you can hear in rock because you can feel rock but at the same time they want to hear flow and once you hear flow you get that from like caribbean music all types of music it's all rhythm you know what i'm saying so well, like thinking about some of those artists that people would talk about, say like, oh, you know, these are great rock artists, for example. Uh, to me, what sort of seems to have been lost is kind of the spirit. And that spirit has sort of continued in, in your music and in the music of artists like Little Ugly Mane. You know, that, that rebellious spirit, that outlaw spirit, I feel like, you know, rock traditionally, you know, is sort of lost. Uh, because you just have tons of artists who are just kind of copying the artists who were outlaws at one time. Whereas, like, people like you, you're kind of venturing out and doing your own thing and pioneering in a way. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because I don't want to just be doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. That's why I choose to do it. All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming on and talking with me about, you know, the culture at large and talking with me about what you have coming up as far as new music and just kind of giving us a, some insight as to sort of what makes your creative process tick and everything. Oh, you're welcome, man. I appreciate you guys having me on the show, man. Like, it was a good conversation and everything, man. So, I appreciate everything. No problem, dude. Have a good rest of your day. Hey, yo, you too, man. Y'all be safe. And all stay positive, stay UELT and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? All right. Thanks, man. All right, yo. Tran. Position. And there you have it, everyone. Another episode of On Track in the Can. Our guest again has been Mr. Denzel Curry. I appreciate him coming on and talking about his music, sort of, you know, opening up and uh, sharing quite a bit there. And next to me somewhere, there's a link where you can check out another episode of On Track. Please do, because we have some other great interviews in this series so far and hopefully more in the future. And uh, you guys are the best forever. <laughs>